is that this is on to bring the university's research and teaching missions to bear on tackling social issues. While the campus community is its core audience, the provost series will be directed as well as the public general. Today, we're going to witness the first lecture in the series on the topic, Chaos Communication, Misunderstanding and Intercultural Encounters. This topic is very relevant to any social unit that has cultural diversity among its members. To give a brief introduction about the event and to introduce the speaker, may I invite Dr. James McCain, the Provost of the University of Sydney. I want to welcome you today to the, the, the inaugural presentation of the Provost Lecture Series at Abu Dhabi University. In the future, I expect that we will have one to two speakers uh, per year, and all of these speakers, as today's speakers, will be very, very high level. Uh, I hope that, that through this series, we'll raise the level of our discourse and uh, our understanding of the world around us. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce tonight's uh, speaker, uh, who is making history as the first Lecture of the Provost Lecture Series. Dr. Julianne House has, has been celebrated around the world for her work in applied linguistics and translation. She is Professor Emeritus of Applied Linguistics at Hamburg University and a senior member of the German Science Foundation Research Center on Multilingualism, uh, where uh, she directs projects on translation and text optimization in multilingual business communication. Her research uh, interests include contrastive pragmatics, discourse analysis, politeness theory, English as a lingual franca, uh, intercultural communication, global business communication, and translation theory and practice. And Dr. Jehan uses her textbooks in her courses. Uh, she has published over 200 articles and books. The title of her, her presentation tonight is Veil of Communication, Misunderstanding the Intercultural Commerce. Please help me welcome Dr. Julian House to Abu Dhabi University. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy to be here. It is a great honor for me to have come to Abu Dhabi University. And I would first of all like to thank the provost for having invited me, but I would also like to thank my dear friend Dr. Marius for having brought this uh, invitation along. This is uh, not, not my first visit in the United Arab Emirates. I've been to Al-Ain twice, but I'm very happy to be here in Abu Dhabi and to be given the honor to give this first progress lecture. <coughs> The topic of my talk today is failed communication, misunderstanding in intercultural encounters. And I believe that this topic is not only relevant for linguists, and linguists, or for language teachers, or for people uh, concerned with uh, something as irrelevant as the arts, but it is also relevant to most other subjects, and particularly today, in a globalized world where we are bound to meet people who not only speak different languages but who come from different cultural backgrounds. This is the outline for my talk. I will first look at the nature of misunderstanding, whether it is naturally something problematic, as most people think, by looking at the term misunderstanding. But I will try, and I hope you will follow me there, that it is also something normal, and it can also be interpreted as something positive, lo and behold. I will then look at a number of causes for misunderstanding, deal with ways of researching the phenomenon of misunderstanding, present to you a discourse comprehension and production model, applying the model to only one case study, I have uh, prepared a handout amounting to six pages, which I hope will be distributed to all of you at some later stage. I hear some of you not, but it will probably will be. I will come up with several explanatory hypotheses. I will also look at misunderstanding in English as a lingua franca, which is one of my recent research topics and which is of particular relevance uh, to the world today. 
and primary lexon those experiments. We can say that there are basically two opposing views of misunderstanding. The first one, the representative, is Emmanuel Shedlock, who worked in conversation analysis. He says that talk in interaction, communication, is built for understanding on the whole effortless understanding. Whereas Nick Kupland and his co-authors claim that language use and communication are pervasively and even intrinsically flawed, partial and problematic. And he says that communication itself is miscommunication. Okay? So we have something like a dialectic of misunderstanding. It's both a problem and a resource. How that? Let's see argue, uh, some arguments for either position. The phenomenon of repair, namely if somebody makes a mistake if, in what he or she says, you can repair it by rephrasing or coming back to what you said. Now, the repair as such is evidence of both the fragility and the robustness of an interaction. As a fundamental interaction of resource by having misunderstanding, a repair as such is evidence that communication must not necessarily fail. Okay? We can also say, rather perversely, as I announced previously, that misunderstanding can be a promoter of understanding. How so? It can reveal diversion and deficits in knowledge states and can thus serve as a vehicle for acquiring, modifying, expanding, differentiating and coordinating knowledge. You think of the mistakes that learners make in your class. If they make the mistake, they show to you that they haven't understood. So this misunderstanding is actually something productive. Okay? Eleanor Oates, who worked on first language acquisition in California, very famous uh, researcher, she speaks about the induction of children into the linguistic cultures practices of their communities and misunderstanding is productive. It shows parents and teachers where knowledge is still limited and what they should do in order to further understand it. So in both the, the, the learning of the first language and the second language, we can say that misunderstanding plays a constructive and positive role. Okay. We've said this. Now, in most of the taxonomies of misunderstanding, however, the negative features of misunderstanding play the greater role, as we can see on, uh, in Kuhlund and Al's um, famous te taxonomy of misunderstanding. They suggest that if uh, various levels, six levels of misunderstanding, at level one, we have misunderstanding as a pervasive, inherently constitutive nature of symbolic meaning. <coughs> In other words, this is the same a thing that we heard before. It is impossible to communicate to perfection. Misunderstanding is built into communication proper. And why? This is quite logical. Why? Because there are no two minds alike. And whatever you say, you don't give another person complete insight into your mental structure, which is quite obvious. Level two, Kuhlman et al. said that the primary goal of interactors are not the creation of perfect performance, but to avoid undue clarity, unpleasantness, confrontation, and so on. There are always minor misunderstandings, but people normally don't feel that it, it disturbs the communication process. They engage in what has been called uh, in the literature the let it pass phenomenon. This means if you don't quite understand, let's say, what the teacher says or what your uh, friend says, you just leave it pass and you wait until the misunderstanding or the unclarity resolves itself. Level three is probably the most dangerous level. It basically means that when you misunderstand somebody, or somebody misunderstands you, that this is imputed on personal defects. That very often happens when members of different cultures 
come together, that these misunderstandings are not explained by cultural difference, but by some nasty attributions of a person who's just stupid, he just doesn't understand, he's just uh, impolite or whatever. These are personal deficits that are computed. Level four is also an interesting level of misunderstanding, where you use a misunderstanding for, per for personal gains, okay? You use it in a strategic way. You probably all know when you go into a foreign country, where you speak the language uh, perfectly well, but you're stopped by, let's say, a policeman or something, all of a sudden you pretend that you do not understand. You use misunderstanding for personal gains. For instance, you don't get a parking ticket, you don't get a fine, whatever you could do. This is done most, most, all over the world. Okay. Level five is particularly relevant for my talk here because the miscommunication, the misunderstanding, resides in deep-seated linguistic and cultural differences. Differences relating to the way people behave in communication, whether they engage in small talk or not, how polite they are, whether they, how they introduce one another, whether they laugh at certain points, all these are cultural differences that play a great role in barring or promoting understanding. Level six, finally, is uh, the deepest level at the level that is very, very difficult to find out about, it is related to ideology. Ideology, uh, uh, traditions, beliefs, and so on, that are deeply anchored in a culture that very frequently, by somebody moving from one culture in, into another culture, does not know about. So this is the, 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 the deepest level. Now let's look at how people have defined misunderstanding. I think you hear the definition by Claire Humphrey Jones, that's her PhD, and she writes, a misunderstanding occurs when a communication attempt is unsuccessful because what the speaker intends to express differs from what the hearer believes to have been expressed. Very obvious, but Basically, how to wait? What are you going to do with this definition? How are you going to operationalize? There is a Greek scholar, Sanghidi Kitsanis, comment on this definition, and she says, detecting and attributing a certain communicative intent to the speaker is in many cases very difficult, if not impossible. This is exactly what I, uh, how I commented this uh, definition. So let's look at a number of different causes for misunderstanding in intercultural talk. At the first level, we can say that in inadequate perception, you just didn't hear what someone says. The speaker mumbles or expresses or pronounces ways uh, that are strange to you, that you don't understand. Second level is inappropriate comprehension at different levels, different linguistic levels namely syntactic, morphological, phonological, pragmatic, and discourse levels. The third one is just you don't know what are the rules in a particular culture. It's sufficient knowledge of the world. Another reason may be uncooperativeness. The speaker just doesn't want to cooperate. He's bouncing his polite and he pretends not to understand. Also, you know, remember the strategic level that we talked about before. And the last level is the speaker may have understood, that is the receptive side, but may not be able to make a comprehensible, neat and perfect production. Okay. These are all uh, different causes. Other causes, important causes, are the indirectness of language. Language, whatever, whenever you say, after something is never made out clear and neat. Most of the meanings in talk need to be inferred. It's not explicit. Secondly, the different social cultural backgrounds are important for misunderstanding. The diverging or overlapping communicative conventions. And lastly, institutionally imposed roles. When an institution imposes a role in front people, they may be prevented from, quote, telling the truth. They may behave differently because the institution governing what they say tells them what to do. 
this is a, a very interesting part of all. Now let's look at what people have done in order to research this understanding. So that we have several paradigms that have been used. The first one is social means of analyzing misunderstandings. Here we can differentiate with Michael Halliday, famous systemic functional linguist, because what goes on in people's heads, intra-organisms, what is in people's heads, and secondly, intra-organisms, what happens between people. 